So when I was fairly young, I noticed that when people were arguing about political topics or philosophic topics, um, that there was usually a dialectical kind of thing going on where there was some truth value and some inadequacy to explain all of the other truth values, but they were, they were seeing the west side of the house or the east side, and be, they were overemphasizing the part that felt most real and meaningful to them based on the perspective of the reality they had. And, uh, and so how to be able to seek, to see through the other perspectives and then seek higher, not higher perspective, because you, you don't get higher perspective, right? How do you seek a higher trans perspective synthesis? Um, this is something that like, this is philosophy 101, right? This is the, the Hegelian dialectic. What is it? Take a particular view on something and postulate it and you have a thesis and then find something that seems like almost the exact opposite view, but that some people believe in, and you have an antithesis. Those will usually be at a similar level of complexity, right? Similar number, if I, if I tried to express the view under maximum information compression, it'd be similar-ish. Um, and so this can look like the debates that you see around capitalism and communism, or similarly around uh, the democratic or Republican or generally left or right kind of political platforms, which can often be thought of as having to do with more emphasis on the collective and the whole or more emphasis on the individual, right? Rights and responsibilities, various things like that. Um, but they actually don't, it's not that there is kind of a, a gradient with a zero and negative and positive numbers and you find the right place between rights and responsibilities. It's that there's actually perpendicular axes and that you can increase rights and responsibilities at the same time, but it's in a higher dimensional space, right? You kind of have to get that higher dimensionality, right? Otherwise people will default to thinking the thing that they really care about is being automatically threatened, right? Their perspective also encodes a value. There is something that they value within that thing, that perspective. And then they might kind of vehemently oppose or not want to hear another perspective because it seems like if that one is held as true, it's this one is true or that one is true. And if that one's held as true, then it will invalidate the value here. As opposed to the synthesis is actually a higher order of complexity. You, under maximum compression of the good statement of it, there would be more total bits required. And it'll end up including the true parts of each of these and how they relate, what the nature of the feedback mm. cycles for the higher perspective. So thesis, antithesis, synthesis, but the synthesis is not of the same type, right? It is a includes and transcends type function. Now, I must say there's a lot of people who hate Hegelian dialectics because particularly there's a lot of kind of uh, empirically or Popperian oriented people because a dialectic has been abused as a tool for manipulation. Uh, but it's like every tool can be weaponized, right? So the fact that I can beat somebody to death with a hammer doesn't mean a hammer has no legitimate purpose and that we should always be wary of everyone with hammers. It means pick, pick any tool in my house and I could make a weapon out of it if you wanted, right? And similarly, pick any intellectual tool and I can make a weapon out of it. I can use the principles of critical thinking as a way to just be an asshole and tell everyone that they're in logical fallacy all the time. Um, so Hegelian dialectic has been weaponized to say, okay, what is the conclusion I want the other person to come to, whether it's true or not for my own game theoretic purposes, I'll phrase that as a synthesis and then I will reverse engineer a thesis and an antithesis, both of which will have little errors hidden, but I'll use principles of rhetoric and I'll frame it up that there's some truth here, there's some truth here, and the synthesis is obviously true. So that weapon has been used all the time, but mm -hmm. that doesn't, tool is not actually valid. So I, it has to do with what is the intent and the capacity of the use of the intellectual tool. Now, the last part there is it's not always thesis and antithesis. It might be lots of different perspectives, right? There might be lots of different insights around a thing going on. And how do we factor all of those to be able to inform both our understanding of the world and where we have collective choice making to engage in? Because whether we build a utility or a road isn't an individual choice only. It's like those are things that we engage in. And so 
whether we do that through a democratic process or a meritocratic process or whatever, all of our social systems are systems for how do we collectively figure out how to coordinate things bigger than in individuals can do on their own. And that does involve coordinating how we're sense making the world and coordinating what we think is valuable. Mm. And so my ability to actually perceive what is valuable to you and what you, how you're making sense of the world without it seeming like a threat to my own and then be able to see, are there higher order frames that can take what you value and what I value and what you're seeing is true and what I'm seeing is true, correct the distortions either of us have and be able to offer better insights forward than had been there previously.